Welcome to day two, 4.1 and 4.2. 4.1, we're finishing off inverse functions. This time we're looking at restricted domains. And then 4.2, we'll get into some exponential functions. So let's jump straight into example one, where we're going to find the inverse of a function. But again, we're going to state any restrictions on that domain of f inverse. So remember our rules. First, substitute y for f of x. Switch x and y. Solve for y in terms of x. And here we might need to do some extra stuff. And then our final uh, step is to switch back. So if we're finding the inverse of f of x equals x over x minus 2, our domain, x can't equal 2. Well, let's just think about it. Why? Because that would make our denominator 0. So we'll come up and figure out what is the domain of our inverse. But let's just kind of walk through what's going on here. So step one, we switch x and y. Okay? So, or sorry, step one, we, we substitute f of x for y. Now we switch x and y. Notice there's two x's, so now there's two y's. And what we want to do is we want to now solve for x. Or sorry, solve for y. But notice I've got two y's, and one of those is in the denominator. So what we want to do here is we essentially want to cross multiply. Okay, so we're going to cross multiply here. And when we do that, we are now left with x times this y minus 2 equals y. I still have two y's, one on the right, one on the left. So the next step is going to be to distribute that x to each of those guys inside. So we have an xy minus a 2x. We're here. We still have two y's. So what we want to do is get all of the y's on one side. So I'm going to bring this y that's on the right, and I'm going to subtract it so that it's now on the left. And I'm going to throw this negative 2x over to the right because I don't need that guy. I want to solve for y by itself. So now what we should do is we should notice, hey, we need to factor out a y. Okay, so when we factor out a y, now I'm just left with x minus 1 equals 2x. So now we're down to 1y. What's our last step going to be? Hopefully you recognize now we just have to divide by x minus 1. And when we do that, our very last step is to talk about or to substitute back the correct notation. So instead of y, we have f inverse of x equals 2x over x minus 1. Now let's just think about what the domain is of this rational function. Well, the domain, remember when we talked about rational functions, is it comes from any holes and from any vertical asymptotes, meaning when our denominator equals 0. So when does our denominator equal 0? when x equals 1. So the domain of our inverse is all x's except, this is just that fancy notation, x cannot equal 1. Let's try this next example together. We want to find the inverse of f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. So step number one, we know we let y equal x squared plus 4x plus 3. And now we switch our x and y's. So now I have x equals y squared plus 4y plus 3. Okay, so how are we going to solve this? Well, we have to solve this by completing the square. Okay, by completing C, T, S. Completing the square. So do we remember how to do that? So Remember, in order to do that, we need to throw the constant over to the other side. So step number one, we're going to have x minus 3. I'm going to leave a plus blank, all right, equals, and then we have our y squared plus 4y plus a blank. So what goes in the blank? Well, remember, we take our middle term, we divide it by 2, and we square it. So we take 4 divide by 2, square it, and that goes over there. So we end up with 4 again. And whatever we do to the left side, we have to do, or sorry, to the right side, we have to do to the left side. So now we just kind of clean it up. I'm going to factor that right side at the same time. So we end up with x plus 1 equals 
and we have our y squared, or uh, sorry, our y plus 2 squared. And now how do we solve this for y? Well, now we can take the square root of both sides, right? And when we take the square root of both sides, what do we have to remember? Well, we have to remember the plus or minus on that left-hand side. And so we are now, we have y plus 2 on the right, and on the left, we have plus or minus the square root of x plus 1. And now we have one more step to get our um, y value all by itself, and I'm going to kind of scooch over here. So we end up with y is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of x plus 1. All right, now remember our last step is we have to use the proper notation. So instead of y, we have f inverse of x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of x plus 1. So there is our answer for the inverse equation. But now we have to talk about the domain, okay? So they gave us at the beginning that the domain of f is equal to x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. So what this means is, or what a little note we can make, okay, is that, let me make a note over here, all right, the, oops, domain of f is really the range of f inverse, right? Because we just flip-flop the x and y's. So the range of f inverse is y is greater than or equal to negative 2, where the domain of x was x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay, so how does that help us? Well, we have to figure out the domain of our inverse, right? So therefore, all we have to do is only take, sorry, only take the positive values from the plus or minus portion of the square root of x plus 1. So if we're looking here, remember when we're trying to figure out the domain and we're talking about the square root of something, all we have to really look at is for, to figure out the domain that x plus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, the domain of f, if we were to solve that, we would get all of our x values such that solving this inequality, we subtract 1, we will get x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. And there is the domain of our inverse function. Now we're going to get into section 2, which deals with exponential functions. So we're going to evaluate and graph exponential functions today. So we'll keep it pretty basic. So an exponential function is the equation f of x equals b to the x power. So x is our power, b is called our base, and the base must be positive. Okay, so kind of keep that in mind. So I want you to go through example two really quick, evaluating f of x equals five to the x when we're given those three different x values. Do that quickly and check back. Okay, did you get what I got? When x equals three, we have five to the third power, so we get 125. When x is negative two, we get five to the negative two. Remember, no um, unhappy exponents. So that means five isn't happy, so we need to move five down below into the denominator, and now we have a positive power there. So we really have one over five squared, which becomes one over 25. And then remember, when x is zero, anything raised to the zero power is simply one. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult. Let's move on to graphing. 
So now we're going to get into graphing these exponential functions. Now, something to keep in mind, what our graph must include, and we're always going to have an asymptote of y equals zero, at least for now. And we'll kind of show you how we know that that is. I want you to include some x values in your table that make the power zero, and a couple more points, so I'll walk through it. Let's look at this first example here. So I always pick a value of x that makes our power zero. So since our power is x, the value that I choose is going to be when x equals zero. And that goes smack dab in the middle of my table. And now I pick values of x on both sides. So I pick positive and I pick negative. And now I just plug those x values into our exponent, our exponential function, and we solve. So when x is two, we get four. When x is 1, we get 2 to the first, which is 2. When x is 0, anything to the 0 is 1. And when x is negative, remember, no negative exponents, so that becomes 1 half. And when x is negative 2, 2 to the negative 2 becomes 1 over 2 squared, or 1 fourth. And what we should notice is that as x gets more and more negative, these y values, or f of x values, are going to get closer and closer and closer to 0. So that tells us we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And we're going to include that. And as you see in the graph, that's what our dashed line is. Okay, and now I just plot those points and we can see that we are growing. This is an exponential growth function, meaning as x is getting bigger, y is getting bigger. Okay, let's take a look at this next example here. So now we have f of x equals 2 thirds to the x power. So again, I look and see, well, what value of x makes this power 0? Well, again, that's when x equals 0. So I put that smack dab in the middle of my table, and I choose x values that surround it, 2 positive and 2 negative. So I get a good shape to my graph. And now when we plug in, when x is 2, we get 2 squared over 3 squared. So that's where we get 4 ninths. When x is 1, we get 2 thirds. When x is 0, anything to the 0 is 1. When x is negative 1, that means 2 isn't happy and 3 isn't happy where they are. So we simply switch those. And now 3 is in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. And now when x is negative 2, again not happy, so we flip them and then we square both of those, so we get 9 fourths. Again, as you see, if x were to get bigger and bigger and bigger, now we're going this direction, these fractions are getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So we still have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. And now all we have to do is plot these points. So we have zero, one, we have negative 1 and 3 halves, we have negative 2 and 9 fourths, kind of estimating, and we have those other two points. And now this is what we call a decay function. As x is getting bigger, y is getting smaller. If you have any questions on anything from this video, make sure you ask in class next time we see each other.